What's going on guys? Sin for the win here. We are back with our franchise mode as the San Jose Sharks and we're here we are at the trade deadline 38 19 and 6 and uh, we're seeing if we need uh, perhaps anything here just to give us that uh further push into uh you know potential to uh win a cup or something like that and either a I think a center maybe would be really good but cap is an issue so we'd have to probably get someone to retain find someone on the block value wise and it might be a bit difficult I did a little bit of pre-scouting and there's two uh, distinct possibilities first one is in Arizona and that would be uh, Jumbo Joe bring him back and try to uh, try to win a cup with Jumbo and have him play on the third line uh, move Gambrell to the wing and I think that'd be a pretty solid option. Turn that third line into more of a scoring third line for sure. I think it could work really well. The other option here. Now he doesn't doesn't take a whole lot of shots though, of course. But he does get some goals. And the other option is on Minnesota. And it's Miko Koivu. A lot more cap and trying to get him to retain might be a bit more difficult. Weaker production takes a little bit more amount of shots, but also looks like he's playing on power play and stuff like that too. Second line and on the power play. I didn't check if Jumbo was on there at all, but he might be. We'll see. Uh, he's playing second line on the first power play, so yeah, they're pretty much the same kind of thing. And I think I have to go with the cap situation. Less money because if, if it's if it's too much, it'll do that thing where it'll try to uh it'll like try to force us to send someone down and really screw things up. So we gotta basically get him to retain all that cap. That's essentially what we have to do. And that's gonna be a bit difficult. We're gonna have to trade maybe a pick in here. Uh, we could throw in Semin. I think that's the guy to throw in. 19, only starter potential, 50 overall. It doesn't look like he'll pan out to be anything special. So throw him in there. We still have Coronar. Uh, that doesn't go through straight up. I'll try it, but they're going to be either pissed about the cap or, yeah, they're not comfortable pretending the salary. But we need them to retain that. So we're going to have to slightly overextend to bring Jumbo back. Um, yeah, that's just kind of what has to happen here. So let's see. Who would we, Who was a... I was had a couple guys in mind who I was thinking about throwing in there. Shmolevsky I like. Uh, maybe Kotkov. Top nine potential. Not incredibly well built defensively. He's okay. Or Letinov. He doesn't have any value, and he's kind of close to. They do want these two guys, but really no value on either of them. But Wendland is at least a possibility. He's not going anywhere. So I'll throw him in there as, like, something to have. Oh, my God. What? Holy crap. I was just going to see what they said, but they actually accepted that. Uh, okay. Yes. Thank you. That is actually nothing. We kept all our picks. I was actually not thinking we'd be able to keep all our picks. I thought I'd have to throw in one of our, probably our third, but no, we kept it. We got all the max picks for this year. No first, but that Vancouver second is going to be relatively good. Could get a low lead out of that. Wow, okay. We got it. Uh, that was easy. Where's my easy button? Because that was way easier than I thought it would be. We didn't have to... Yeah, and we got the retention on the, on the cap. And we didn't have to lose anything. That was really good so now we decide who we sit PK is doing well so Melker Carlson being on the PK I kind of don't want to sit him might have to be Radil even though he's pretty damn good defensively I guess yeah we'll have Sorensen down there so I guess we'll sit Radil scratch him I don't think I don't think he's anywhere but the fourth line so Sorensen moves down there Gambrell doesn't have as good as face offs um, let's put Suomela there Gambrell there, get him on their natural sides, and then we insert Jumbo. Oh, what? Do I have to bring him up? Uh-oh. 
it shouldn't tell me wait okay yeah he's here it shouldn't tell me oh what it would oh it didn't give me the message it said he would ah so he would bring us over the cap to bring him up that is interesting I didn't think it would do that okay well, can we send anyone down who... Yeah, if we send down Radil, that'll work. I don't want to lose Radil, though. He's pretty damn good defensively. Everyone here is waiver eligible. You know what? Goodrow. Goodrow. I... Yeah. We have Radil for depth, so we can send down Goodrow. If we lose Goodrow, we, we lose him. That's it. Yeah. Because I was, I was actually thinking I'd have to trade him or something in there. But let's send down Goodrow. That'll work. If we lose Goodrow, we lose Goodrow. Oh, no. What? Wait, why? It says we're... Oh, my God. It's doing the thing anyway. Can't even do Redeal, can we? Jesus Christ. I don't understand why this is a thing. It We're not over cap. Clearly. It says we have... <sighs> Might have to be Melka Carlson we send down. No one should take him. I don't want to send him down, but I guess we'll have to. Ugh. That's so silly. None of these guys will work. And Goodrow's got the most cap, and we can't actually send him down because that doesn't work. Will Carlson even work if we tried to send him down? See, that won't even work. That makes zero. This doesn't make sense. I don't get why this happens. We just made a trade to make our team better, and we can't do anything with it. Doesn't work with Stevenson doesn't I don't understand why this is a thing I got the retention it clearly says that we'd have cap space all right well let's try to ship off a bit a bit of cap then to see if that helps it's really silly I don't I don't get why that is a <sighs> Because I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know why that happens, but it does. So who has cap that we could ship off here? That would make it work. Maybe Milk or Carlson. Like, I don't know if it would work. I'd rather ship off Goodrow for pretty much nothing, but I don't know if that would let us bring up Jumbo. Still. Like, that doesn't seem like it's enough. I feel like it would have to be Milker Carlson. And he's been good on our P PK, but you know what? <sighs> I guess I'll have to. That's kind of what we need to do. This really sucks. Ah. I might do some experimenting because this game's cheese. And if I'll try to ship off Goodrow, if I still can't bring him up from that then I'll do that. It doesn't make sense. It literally says we have the cap to make that move possible, but it doesn't let us make the move. That's what that's why that's what bugs me. It's and it didn't give me a message. I think the reason it didn't give me a message cuz we still had a max amount of players on our main roster. I think that would be the issue there. No, it's not the issue. So it just didn't it didn't notify me. It didn't say this person would have to be sent down. Yeah, that's really weird that it didn't give us any notification for that. Because we can't bring him up. I wonder if I pass the trade line line if I could bring him up. But that's a big risk. I think it could work if we pass the trade deadline. So I got the save right here. Let's pass the trade deadline and see if that works bringing him up. If it doesn't, then I'll reload. But it's cheese. That's the only reason I'm, I'm save scumming right now is because that's some cheese. It says we have the cap to do, make that move, but it doesn't let us make the move. So I'm going to see if uh, this works. If it doesn't work, then it doesn't work. Nope. All right, Dell liked his contract extension. We got a shootout win in that one. Let's see if we can make, make it work. If not, we're going to have to ship off some cap. But theoretically, in real life, salary cap after the uh, trade deadline, or maybe that's when the playoff starts that it doesn't matter. Okay, apparently it's when the playoff starts. Jesus. 
But, I mean, we could just hold on to Jumbo down there until the playoff starts and bring him up. But I don't even know if then that'll work because I don't think that works either. Still no. Okay, so we're going to have to ship off Cap. That's really, really annoying. Shipping off Goodrow from a fifth from next year. That'll go through. All right, let's see if that if that works to bring up Jumbo. If not, we might have to go for more Cap. But Goodrow's the expendable dude here. So we did ship off some cap. Hopefully we could bring up Thornton. Nope. So that doesn't work. Okay, well, sending down Carlson would work. Sending down Radil would work as well, but I'd rather not lose him. Let's see how our defense is looking. Well, we do have Letinov, who might be able to play depth for us. No. How's D. Simone for depth defense? If I can maybe risk losing Kyle Wood. Sorta. He, he would be serviceable. If I lose, we might lose Kyle Wood here. If we send him down. So this would work at least. We got enough cash out of the way. I'd rather send down Kyle Wood than anyone else. Yeah, if he gets claimed, he'll get claimed, but he does have to clear waivers and he's on a pretty good contract. He's a pretty serviceable player, but I want this guy on my team, honestly. And that's what we have to do with EA's bullcrap. So please don't get claimed. He got claimed, it's good. All right, whatever. <laughs> Ugh. It's only a depth defenseman. But still, that's it's it's annoying when stuff like that happens. I didn't want to lose Radil. He's very, very serviceable on a fourth line. Or as a depth forward. So let's do that. Put Jumbo in there. Yeah, honestly, Carlson probably wouldn't have been claimed, but our penalty kill is doing really well with him on it. And he's on the top penalty killing unit. So I... That was the last person I wanted to either trade or move to make something happen. So I didn't. Yeah, unfortunate. So hopefully we don't have any uh, defensive injuries. If we do, we'll put Radil in there. <laughs> Probably not, but I don't know. We might. <laughs> if we have multiple injuries, though, we have to call someone up if we have that happen. And De Simone is the only dude who can who can be called up, really. And he's not with not good awareness, but everything else is good about him. And he's, yeah, that's who we'd have to use. So we got to hope for no defensive injuries, really. Losing Kyle Wood like that, it does suck, and it does hurt our depth. It shouldn't have to be like that, but it's that's a thing that happens in the game, and it doesn't make sense in accordance with the CBA and stuff. In my, like, if you retain salary, and it shows that we're... I don't know. I think it takes into account his entire year's salary instead of his salary right now, which is doesn't make sense. But yeah, that's a recurring theme here in franchise mode that has really never been ever fixed. But we made it happen. We got everything to work. Goodrow's no longer here, but he's pretty garb. So yeah. That's going to be our move here at the deadline. deadline. We obviously can't do anything else. If someone hits waivers, uh, like a defenseman here at the end, I'll claim them. Like a good, uh, solid defenseman, I'm definitely going to claim someone off waivers. Sucks losing uh, Kyle Wood. Uh, Matt Calvert is not a defenseman. All right, Dell accepted his contract again. <laughs> we lost that game against Minnesota. Oh, God. Don't tell me that that actually hurt our team. Oh my gosh. Really? A five game losing streak? After. I don't believe it. I honestly don't believe that. <laughs> Why? Why would we do worse after that trade? No friggin' way we would do worse after that trade. 
Well, we got a lot of scouted scouting done here. Some really solid stuff. Only one low elite though. There we go. All right, win a lot of games now. Oh my god. <laughs> How would our team be worse after that? Come on now, EA. Help me out. There you go. A few wins in a row. Let's erase that. All right, all right. Everyone was just too overjoyed with Jumbo back into on the team. We're going to make the playoffs, but we might actually uh, fall out of uh, first. 47-27-8. Not the strongest end of the season. And we're facing LA in the first round. What is this, 2012? Oh, man. Okay, well, locker room chemistry actually dropped somehow. Let's see how the team did overall. Evander Kane actually led our team in points, being on that first line. 68 point year. Looks like that first line really came to play. Goals forward looks like it dropped overall, though. Goals against was good. Power play was pretty good. Penalty kill actually dropped off a bit. Interesting. Hmm. We did uh, end up getting first in the division with our row. So that's nice. Get out of it, Edmonton. They had more wins than we did, and we still got first. <laughs> nice. That must have been a lot of shootout wins for Edmonton then. Jeez. Yeah, and I did, I did hear someone say they wanted to uh, check out their line, so I'll, I'll definitely try to remember to do that here. But let's check out our own stats. Vander Kane, 26 goals, 42 assists for 68 points. Couture was 60 points, 24 goals, 36 assists. Meyer, 57. Uh, oh, yeah, Miss Hurdle right there was 63 points, 21 goals, 42 assists. Uh, Meyer at 57, not quite 20 goal season. Stone actually did get 50 points, so that's good. Nykvist almost had 50, 49. Thornton had uh, 38 points total. Gambrell with 33. Suomela had 19 points, 54 games played. Really not what I was anticipating after the start he had. So maybe we want to put a more defensive guy up there. Although he is good in every every way right there. Sorensen. Carlson. That fourth line is tough. And maybe some... Do I want to put Redeal there instead of Sorensen for the playoffs? Maybe. Or maybe Sorensen instead of Somella. That's an option we'll have. So we, at least we have that option to mix things up. Uh, Carlson was 65 points on the back end. 59 for Burns. Carlson wasn't even to end the year. Really not good. Him and Vlasic kind of struggled in some ways. Goaltenders. Jones didn't have the best year. Dell did great as our backup. But yeah, not the best year from Jones. we got to hope he turns it on for the playoffs. All right. Let's check the league here. All right. Tarasenko. So not a high-scoring year for anyone, really. Tarasenko with 88 points. Tied with Goodrow. So Tarasenko and Goodrow tie up. Uh, Ovechkin with 87. And looks like Tarasenko is going to be taking home that Maurice Richard. Indeed, 48 goals. No 50 goal scores this year. Euler with the most assists at 58. Let's see, plus minus leaders Ovechkin, then Oshi, and then Kuznetsov. So Washington's got a scary line right there. Ovechkin with the most shots. Tarasenko with a much better shooting percentage, though. Yeah, far and away, Tarasenko the best shooter. Tyler Sagan, though, 13 game winners on only 34 goals. Wow. That's really incredible when you think about that. Uh, power play goal leader was Tarasenko with 17, four more than Buchanevich, who's in second. And power play point total, Dreisaitl and Crosby tied with 28. Uh, Dvorak with three shorties on the year. Shorthanded point totals. None of us up there. All right, and let's check out the defensive stats here. Uh, McDavid, decent face off percentage, but Ryan O'Reilly, much better. So it looks like O'Reilly's the front runner for that uh, Selkie right now. Yep, I think uh, O'Reilly's getting that Selkie. Doesn't look like anyone's coming close. All right, defensively, Carlson with an 81-point year and a plus 64. Norris, 
There you go. John Carlson, Norris. That's that's it. That's no contest. Wow. Pretty ridiculous. Wow. Yeah, that's crazy. Okay. No, I don't even need to check anything else in there. And let's see how the goaltenders did. All right. Crawford and Rene. <laughs> Crawford having a resurgence here. Pecarine. Wow, there's four dudes right there with each other. Rask, Murray, Rene, and Crawford, all with tremendous years. Gotta respect the amount of games that Crawford played. <laughs> That's a lot. So it's four different goalies who were lights out all year. And I can't even pick a Vesna winner from there. That's tough. Alright, looks like Kyler Yamamoto? Best forward confirmed, 51 points in his rookie year at age 21. Pretty dang good. Rookie goalie, anyone to uh, supplant him right there? Nope, doesn't look like it. Nope, definitely not. Uh, Demko didn't do bad, but not really not good enough. Neither did Gillies. So that should do it, and let's take a look at those fun stats here. Got the hits leader in uh, Shea with 185. And fights. Would be Revo with 23 and Kyle Clifford with 12. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at uh, Edmonton's lineups here. Just so I uh, got a request to see uh, why they were uh, contenders right now. So let's check it out. Let's see why exactly they would be contenders. No, no, it's E. Alphabet. Uh, so Nugent Hopkins, McDavid, Pooley, Arvey, who I don't have scouted. Yeah, it doesn't really make sense why they're that heavy of contenders. Very top-heavy team. What the fuck? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'm honestly at a loss. He had a 29 point year. 69 points. Yamamoto, we know, had a 51 point year. Pugliarvi had 51 points. McDavid had 73. 53. I, I, it honestly doesn't make sense. Lucci said 24 points. What the hell? Probably all those fucking shootout wins. <laughs> That's probably what it was. They probably just got all those points and like shootout wins and shit. Cause it, it it logically doesn't make any sense. Like yeah, Co okay, okay, there it is. Koskinen actually had a really good year. I was looking at his the wrong thing, I guess. Koskinen had a very good year. Probably good enough to get him up to like mid mid eighties stat growth. Honestly, seventy three games played. Okay, so he had a very good year. That would be part of the reason. That helped him a lot. And then since they didn't get a whole hell of a lot of goal scoring, they won a lot in the shootout and probably had a very good power play. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. It's it's just one of those years. That's kind of like a, a, what, 2017 year? <laughs> Where they'll make the playoffs and then probably fall right back out. Okay, but anyway, speaking of playoffs, LA Kings are our first-round opponent here. Let's see what their lineups are looking like. We should have pretty good books on them. They are in our division. Okay, not as good as I thought, but Toffoli, Kopitar, Kovalchuk. Yeah, not looking insanely strong, honestly. But they got Quickie back there, and when you have Quickie, you got a chance. He didn't have that good of a year, though, so we should, quote-unquote, beat them. We should beat them. But will we is the question. That is the ultimate question. Will we beat them? We'll have to see. I'm going to leave these lines how they are for now. I'll, we'll, we'll keep an eye on things. If we're not doing too well here and there, then we'll mix things up. But we look like the stronger team in all three line, all, all four lines, all defense. It, we look like we're, we should be the stronger team here. So hopefully we play like it and get the job done. We got the home ice advantage game one against LA. Mark Stone has been injured with a mild concussion. That is just perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. Not. Nyquist up, Gambrell up. 
think I'll put Radil on the third line. I'll sub him in all lines because I'm not going to obviously keep him there, but for the three on three, it won't matter. Hopefully we won this game because I would suck if we lost Mark Stone and had a pretty significant injury. Okay, so Radil obviously not in there. Gambrell's already on the point. Thornton. Obvious. Get Jumbo in there. Bringing him back. Come on, please say we won that game. We lost it 2 0. Awesome. Didn't score a single goal. <sighs> game two, we're now missing Stone. We're mixing things up on the lines. We got to mix things up if we don't win this game, though, for sure. We got shut out again. Awesome. Oh, the choke job. The San Jose chokes coming to play. Okay. Guess we're doing this here. Let's actually put Kane and him on there. You know what? No, we can keep Kane and Hurdle together, but got to do that. Haven't scored. Pretty ridiculous. <sighs> shut out twice. <laughs> you get shut out fucking twice. On home ice. Game three. This team is broken. This team is just broken. Stone's back, but it probably doesn't matter. Unbelievable. We got swept. We scored one goal in the entire... Uh, Entire series. <laughs> Martin Jones did great. What? I just admit a complete loss. I don't understand it. I mean, what? Ah. <laughs> we should have them a bit more scouted at least. Let's see if they're a team that should be able to shut down an opposition in all those games. Or if we just got just completely screwed by the sim. Okay, that looks a lot better, yeah. But still, we don't have great scouting on anyone. That defensive core just looks insanely bullshit. But Jonathan Quick just... <sighs> wow. Okay, well, there it is. Losing to LA like it's 2014, except they just swept us. They didn't even need to reverse sweep us, and we scored one goal in the entire series. That bugs me. I, I felt like we were... Like, we, we almost had three goals per game in the regular season. How the hell did we just get shot down that heavily? Did we just get a hot goaltender? But why? This team is cursed. This team is cursed. I don't know what to do, but this team is cursed. If watching my videos just isn't enough sin for you, be sure to go over there on Twitter and shoot me a follow. And you could even join our Discord server as well to talk with some of the other sinners out there. The links to both are in the description.